Well, hi there. I'm here today with one of the most requested lizards that we haven't covered yet, the Euromastix, and one of the most popular lizards that we have covered, the Bearded Dragon, because these two lizards, as it turns out, are both very similarly sized desert-dwelling agamid lizards. They both make fantastic pets, and we want to figure out which one makes the best pet. So we're going to put them head to head. To compare these two awesome lizards, we're going to have to look at three of the most important aspects of picking a great pet lizard. And those are awesomeness, because you wouldn't want to own it if it wasn't awesome, expensiveness, and difficulty. Let's start off with awesomeness, shall we? Looking at these two lizards, they both look awesome, but kind of in different ways. Both of them are well suited to life in the desert. Both of them have got a nice, dry, scaly skin. The Euromastix is much, much smoother for most of its body than the Bearded Dragon, which actually has some fine, not actually sharp, but fine spikes all over its body. The Euromastix, most of its body is actually fairly smooth, uh, almost like a big crested gecko or something, but their tail is extremely spiky, and these spikes are actually considerably sharper than the spikes that you find on the Bearded Dragon. The Bearded Dragon's kind of got a bigger, boofier head, and it's got that big beard it can put out, which is very impressive. The Euromastix has got a more kind of rounder, softer face than the Bearded Dragon. They're both really cool-looking lizards, though, but kind of in different ways. Both of these lizards are like I think, the perfect size for a lizard. They're both big enough that you can handle them confidently and not worry about hurting them. They're solid, you're not going to lose them while they're out. They're fun to play with at this size, but at the same time they're not too big, where they need an enor enormous enclosure where they could potentially be dangerous, like some of the bigger lizards are. I think this is a really great size for a pet lizard. They're both really great to interact with, but they're very different. As you can tell, they're very different to interact with. Bearded dragons, in general, like to be up high. They like to be in the highest area in their enclosure. If they're on you, they like to climb up on your shoulder, and they will just stay in that high place for a long time. The Euromastix is very different, because Euromastix don't hide out in the open very often. They do bask out in the open, but they stay near a rock crevice, and they always want to be somewhere where they can jam themselves in and they inflate themselves and all they leave is this spiky tail to grab onto, which is just a horrible meal. And so that is how they defend themselves. And they're generally trying to get to a tight, secure place, whereas the bearded dragon is just trying to get up high and then it'll stay there for a long time. So they're very different to interact with. The Euromastix are a lot more nervous. They're usually trying to get closer to somewhere safe where they can hide. Bearded dragons, I don't even know how to get one to hide. If you put a hide in their enclosure, all they will ever do is stand on top of it. They'll never go inside. Neither of these lizards are particularly inclined to bite, scratch, or tail whip. They're kind of capable of doing it. A Euromastix might kind of whip this tail at you if you bug it in the night or something like that. But generally speaking, they're not going to scratch you on purpose unless they're just trying to hold on to you. They're not going to bite you. They're not going to whip you with their tail. And neither is the bearded dragon, as long as they're somewhat used to handling. Sometimes if you get a bearded dragon, like if you caught one in the wild in Australia, or if you had one that had never been handled in its whole life, then they can be a little more nervous, but they're not going to bite you, generally speaking, unless they think you're food. Neither of these animals, and you know I'm going to love this, neither of these animals can drop their tails, which makes them both just phenomenal in my book. I, you know how much I hate it when a lizard can drop its tail because it's something I just worry about all the time, not something you have to worry about with a Euromastix or a bearded dragon marvelous. They both eat veggies. So both of them actually have a fairly similar diet as far as that goes. They're going to need a lot of fresh vegetables and, and a great diversity. And, and these, are going to be, these are going to be healthy vegetables, not like iceberg lettuce. These are going to be things like collard greens, mustard greens, kale sparingly as it can bind calcium. Try to avoid things like spinach and broccoli, which are actually much worse about that. But a, a great diversity of healthy greens are perfect for a bearded dragon or a Euromastix. A big difference in their diet is that bearded dragons are going to eat a lot more insects. And they eat a ton of them, especially while they're growing up. And that is a pain in the neck. Euromastix, on the other hand, 
they're going to eat a lot of seeds, things like lentils, and those are much easier to get. Bearded dragons are going to eat a lot of insects, which is kind of a pain because you've got to have insects on hand, and that's kind of a bummer about them. Woo! But sort of like I mentioned before, see how they just like to get up high? I love that about them. The Aromastix, like I said, is going to try to hide, and it's not just going to hide while you're handling it, it's going to hide often, not all the time, but fairly often inside of the enclosure, and that's kind of lame. Overall, you know, they've both got some pros and cons when it comes to awesomeness. They're both kind of equally awesome. So this round, pretty much a draw. When it comes to expensiveness, well, both of these lizards to purchase are moderately expensive. Bearded dragons are going to be a lot easier to find locally, and so that might save you some money. But they're both what I would call moderately expensive. Purchasing the animal is actually fairly affordable. They both need fairly similar enclosures. That enclosure might cost you a little bit more, especially because of the lights you're going to need. Both of these animals are going to need hot basking lights and UV lights, which can be expensive. The Euromastix is actually going to need a slightly hotter basking spot, and actually the enclosure as a whole is going to need to be hotter. So they're going to need more of these lights than bearded dragons are, so that's kind of a, a bigger con about these guys, but it's a con for both of them. These are just going to need either more lights or bigger bulbs, and you got to be careful to make sure that the whole enclosure has got a lot of variation in the temperature that they can get to a cooler area, but really the whole enclosure is pretty darn warm warmer than the bearded dragon enclosure. They're both going to need fresh veggies, and those are somewhat expensive, but at least they're generally speaking easy to find, and I really like that. You don't even need a pet shop in order to have access to fresh, fresh veggies, you just need a grocery store, and most humans live somewhere close to a grocery store. One cost that's going to be a lot bigger for the bearded dragon is going to be the insect feeders. Not only do you need access to them, but they eat a lot of them, especially as juveniles, they eat a ton of insect feeders. And some Euromastics, especially depending on the species and the particular individual, some Euromastics will take a few insect feeders from time to time. Some will ignore them entirely. But some of them need a few insect feeders, but not nearly on the scale that a bearded dragon will. I didn't have to start breeding dubia cockroaches, for example, until I started keeping bearded dragons, and then I needed some source of inexpensive feeder insects because they were just costing me an arm and a leg to feed. Because of the pros and cons, again, to keeping a bearded dragon and keeping a Euromastix, where Euromastix is going to need more expensive lighting and the bearded dragon is going to need more expensive feeders, this round also is kind of a draw. It's just whichever one is a bigger con for you, that's probably what's going to matter most. When it comes to difficulty, the truth is that both of these lizards are fairly easy as long as you have them set up properly. They both come from some of the most inhospitable environments on Earth, and so they need to be just tough as nails. And these guys are both tough as nails. That doesn't mean that you should abuse them, but they're pretty darn hardy, both of them. The main thing that you're going to really need to make sure that you have right is the lighting and the temperature. That means that you're going to need something like a temperature gun, to help make sure that you've got the right basking temperatures because surface temperatures and air temperatures can be very different. A heat gun is the best way to make sure that you've got your temperature gradients just right so you don't bake them and so they're not too cold. After getting the enclosure right, the biggest thing is just going to be having a broad selection of veggies, fresh veggies for both of them, and they're both going to need that. The Euromastix will initially be more difficult to find. Every pet store in the world that sells reptiles pretty much has bearded dragons. Euromastix are considerably less common to find in pet shops. So that will be a little bit harder, but once you have your Euromastix and you have your proper enclosure, they're honestly about as easy as a lizard can be to keep. The bearded dragon is also very easy, but it is going to need a lot of expensive insect feeders. And for that reason, and really only that reason, this round goes to the Euromastix. Overall, the Euromastix is harder to find, and that is why they weren't on our list of the top five reptiles for beginners. You've maybe seen that video before. If not, it's right there. But once you have the animal, the Euromastix, really just because of what it eats, is ever so slightly easier than the bearded dragon to keep. And for this reason, and by like the slimmest of margins, this head-to-head -head goes to the Euromastix. Honestly, they're very, very similar. The pros and cons are very, very similar for both of them. It pretty much comes down to a preference of which one you like the best. And 
how willing you are to routinely get a lot of insect feeders. We will have full videos right there on both the Euromastix and the Bearded Dragon, so be sure to check those out. And expect to see the Euromastix on a new Top 5 Lizards very soon. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. You're a good shoulder lizard. You not so much, but I like you a lot. Marvelous. 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 Marvelous.